I'm going to try to get through this video um, without getting emotional because a lot of people like to play head games when they see people upset. And um, I don't like to get upset in front of people. I don't like to cry in front of people. Um, so here I am again. I was here about a year ago talking about my 50th year. And I haven't changed much of anything. I haven't um, made any great milestones. I haven't lost any weight. Not a lot has changed. Um, and I think a lot of that is to my, my mental health. The state of my mental health is to blame. Um, it seems like it only gets harder. And I know that one of the biggest problems is the fact that I'm 51. I'm probably premenopausal. And I don't have a doctor. The only medication that I take is the insulin that I buy over the counter. Because if I didn't, I'd probably been dead a long time ago. Um, so I don't, I don't really know that I had a plan on what to talk about here. But I do know that I planned on... Sometimes I just need to talk. Even if I talk to myself. Even if I post a video and it gets zero views... You know, when all that shit happened with that coffin wallet last year, one of the things that I don't think that people who really don't know me, but they think they do, um, failed to understand is that I really don't care about popularity. Um, in the sense of my YouTube channel, it would be nice because popularity would mean that I would maybe hopefully start making some actual money at that again. Um... But when it comes to popular opinion or following the crowd or any of that, I have never, <laughs> never been that type of person. And um, sometimes that's difficult. It's difficult when you feel like you're on the right side of something. And I feel like with social media, the internet, and the fact that we're all living virtually, basically now, um, people don't want to be on the unpopular side of an opinion or an argument or anything. And it has spilled over and carried over, in my opinion, to the real world, if you want to put it that way. And if this video is flashing like bright and dark um, through, I don't know what it is. My son got me a really nice computer um, last year, but the webcam on it is shit. So <laughs> love you, Caleb. But yeah. Um, but anyway. Um, so I feel like even for myself, sometimes I'm going to be really, really as candid in this podcast as I can. Um, and I feel like I seem to always be in some shit. But anyway, I just I feel like maybe people look at me when something happens and it happens huge and I tend to post a lot and say a lot and run my mouth a lot. That people are like, oh, it seems like she's always in this or that. And it's easy to look at one side of the story and think you know the whole situation and you don't just like with the whole coffin wallet issue i had friends saying well maybe she's just mad because you stole her idea no honey there's no stealing of ideas in this world anymore pretty much everything has been done and to be fair the coffin shape has been around for a long time but that's not i'm not gonna let this be about that cunt and her people again it's just that that was a big thing that was like the biggest thing that has ever happened to me on the internet and i thought it was completely wild and you know to be honest behind the scenes you guys didn't see i was trying to be reasonable with her i was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt 
I, and, and it got to the point where you couldn't talk to these people because it's not about right and wrong anymore. It's about the biggest side winning, the most viral side winning, the side with the most followers winning. That's why they didn't touch my original YouTube channel because she ain't shit on YouTube. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's always, um, popular opinion wins, not the right opinion, not the right side, not the true story. And it's, it's just always who's got the most people standing behind them. It didn't matter that 95,000 of her followers, the majority of them thought she was in the right, just simply because they liked her. Not that there were laws and rules and, and regulations that said I was right. And at that situation, that type of situation has occurred again recently, but more in, in my personal life. And um, it, it, it caused me to lose my job. I had a job that I really liked. And I mean, it was, it was strenuous because I am getting older and I have a lot of health problems that are not being addressed. So I struggled with that job. But I was happy to have it, even if, it, you know, I stayed on night shift and I, had, I got to work by myself and take care of 12 residents in a small facility. And I really liked it. You know, I came home every morning, my hair soaking wet with sweat, every joint in my body aching because now I deal with osteoarthritis, but I thought I'm making money. I can do the things I want to do. I can buy the things I want to buy. I can do for my daughter again. I think that I had a very unpopular opinion there, and I won't go into detail. When I saw wrong things, I spoke up, and it was a mistake because it cost me my job. But I feel like, you know, I'm on the fence with what, what am I supposed to feel because I know that I pointing out mistakes that could be detrimental, extremely detrimental. I'm a med tech, and I will tell, just leave it as blank as I can without completely confusing you. But if you know the, the work, I don't understand. I, I do not understand why majority rules and not what's right rules anymore. And I'm so lost in this world. And I'm so tired of being caught up in my own head and my own emotions. And, and I want to I want to do the right thing, and at the same time, I'm just, I am robotically, what's the word I can say? I'm an autopilot when it comes to things that I see that are just extremely wrong. You know, it's really hard for me to just sit back and not say anything when I see it. And I do believe that that um, cost me my job. My employer actually, I think, was trying to um, force me out by uh, basically just messing with my time card. And taking a day and hours and hours off of my two-week pay. And ignoring me when I ask for it to be resolved way before payday. And um, then when payday came around, she played little games with me. Her and, and the other, I guess they're co-owners, I don't know. But I knew, you know, I just had a feeling by their, the way they voiced themselves to me. And the way they spoke to me. And the way they treated me. That this was all part of a larger plan to run me out of the facility and I believe that because I you know people I thought were good people were angry at me for saying you can't do that you you can't do that you cannot this is not how we were trained I got to stop talking about that because I'm gonna get myself in some shit but I just have become more cynical as I've gotten older. And maybe it's my fault. I'm, you know, I'm not sitting here saying the world is against me. I'm sitting here saying, what can I do to fit in? Do I need to fake my life on Facebook? Do I um, overlook things that I think are dangerous to another human being? People who should be encouraging and hyping someone up. But all they ever do is beat them down, break them down, tear them apart, rip them to pieces. Just, I, I feel like I'm done. I'm, I'm done, you know, as far as, I mean, sometimes I want to keep my, my cards close to my chest. I think it all boils down to my mental health and how I feel about myself 
and how I feel about where I am in life. And I'm going to go back to this. And I don't really care. Because it's me. And my feelings. And whether you can. You sit around and say. Oh that's bullshit. That's not this. That's it's been so long. I lost my biggest cheerleader. I lost the person that I found. We found each other. And he believed so deeply in me. That I felt. Most of the time. I felt really good with him. And I'm so lost. Like there's nobody out there. At all. There's not that sits down with me and says it's going to be okay. Here's what you can do. I don't even know at this point if my camera was fully recording, but I do have my microphone on, so some of this might be just a photograph or something. But I want to post it because it is really hard to... Um, Live in your own head by yourself. And people think they understand you. They think they know you. Even the people that you are the closest to. And they don't. You know. I had big plans for this year. And I thought we were already going to get them started. And what my daughter and I were going to do. Is we were just going to go ahead with it ourselves. We, we had a, a benefactor who was going to help. But it was taking a while, so we were going to go ahead and try to get an embroidery business started. It's a really great idea. It's, it's something I can do. I love to draw. I can design my own things. And I never thought of it. Never thought of it. Um, until somebody suggested it, and I started looking into it. And what happens with me is, and I think it would happen with anybody, you can't lift somebody up and then drop them when they're way up in the air. You can't do that. You can't affect somebody that way and then blame it on them. And that made things uh, a little harder. You know, I had all these people coming at me in different directions. You know, I should do this. I should do that. I, sh uh, I can do this. I can do that. And I don't think that it was fully appreciated that the reason I got a job was to help facilitate that and my daughter and I had truly had um serious plans I mean we we rented a storage building we are we are pack rats I wouldn't say hoarders but pack rats never throw anything away we had tons of stuff from our hobbies and all that we rented a 10 by 10 storage building and just started cleaning out the house and making room to start something you know, it's not a big apartment here. It's little, but we were going to make it work. And we were excited about that. And and I was really excited about that because I was, I'm was i also trying to build up my credit. So I bought stupid things that I could build credit with and not so stupid things. We needed a decent car. So we got that. And it actually, my credit score has gone up tremendously in the three months that we've had the car. We make our payments on time and make payments on this little stupid thing on time. It's not a DJ Osmo, so if anybody knows what that is and you get excited, don't. I'm going to be doing a review on this. and it's. But it was to build my credit. You know, I, I told my daughter, I said, uh, if we build enough credit, we can get one of these machines and we can start doing things. I bought the some software to design embroidery to make embroidery designs or make my drawings into embroidery designs um but it turned out not to be the right one so I got ripped off on that but it wasn't much so but you know we we made big plans and it's that you know I don't know what to do to convince people that I just don't need to be hyped up and then let down I don't need to be told I can do it and then be told I, they don't think I can do it and if I'm offending you or hurting your feelings I still love you but you don't know my state of mental health, how hard it was to have that job and be. It's a 30-minute drive. It's a 12-hour job with people with mental health issues of their own. I was tired, exhausted every day that I was off. My body just ached and ached because I have osteoarthritis. And I never thought it would be so painful, but it hurt so bad. It hurt to take a step. And when I would get home from work, all I wanted to do was sleep. But I knew we were getting down that road. We were going to do it. 
and I lost my good paying job, a really good paying job. I never thought in my life would a med tech, a low level, you know, I'm not even a CNA anymore. A job like that would pay so good. And it did. It, pay, it, it paid very well. I'm just grateful that in the time I had the job, I got all the bills caught up. Because it's, it's not my daughter's fault. It's not her responsibility. And there were a lot of times when I told her she could put a bill off because I didn't want to ask her to spend more of her money on. I wanted her to have money for herself. So we were behind in a lot of things. My The car be, the car payment and things like that that needed to be paid on time. The rent got paid on time. But things like the light bill, the water bill, they're gro they were grossly behind. The light bill still is. But I was catching, every paycheck was catching that up. And I finally got to the point where I just about did it. And we were like, probably in June, we're going to start thinking of purchasing things to start the business. Because I know I can do it. And then with people that are supposed to love you, who make you feel like shit, when you fall, when you stumble and fall, and there's people behind you. Who should be saying, get up, you got this. Reach out your hand, help me stand. Just just get help me get my balance and then back off. I can do it. Instead, they're like, well, you know, it was expected because it was expected. Because my whole life, I have overthought every single move I made. Everything I've ever done. Good or bad, I have stepped back and thought about it so hard that I have ruined good chances for myself because I overthought it to the point that I gave up or I just, its it was so overwhelming. I can't even explain it. I mean, I have zero trust for people. Nobody. I don't trust anybody. And I don't even blame that on other people anymore. I just don't trust anybody. I don't trust men because they've let me down. Even to the point of the love of my life, just leaving and dying. You know, that's it. No going back on that. You know, when I do something good, a lot of the times any anything that I have done that I guess some people, are, you know, you, overwhelmingly good things, I never talk about. Because, uh, you know, a part of that is that we, I can't blame any of my adult actions on my childhood, but I can definitely blame my emotions and my feelings on that and the way that I handle situations. And it's hard to outgrow that when you have always had people over your shoulder making sure that you fall hard when you fall. And I just needed one person in this universe to believe enough in me that I stopped overthinking and I stopped doubting and I was getting there. And then he died. <laughs> and then he died. You know, Julian had this way of making me feel like I could do anything. And I believe if he were still alive. We'd be doing anything. He was so encouraging. He was so. Just. There was not really ever an occasion where he gave me. You know where he made me feel. Like a loser. And I just don't, I don't, I don't at this point know what to do. You know, I, I've been job hunting every day since. They, they, they basically told me not to come back um, after the argument over my, my pay discrepancy. So I lost my job the weekend, the last weekend, the weekend of Mother's Day. And it's, it's really hard 
to think about. There's a really good friend of mine. Uh, uh, not really good. I'm no, I'm not really good friends with anybody, but a, a young lady, a girl I've known for a long time, and. I overthought it so much while I was there with things that were going on that the the last thing I wanted to do was cause her any grief because she spoke for me to get the job. So, you know, I've overthought that to the point to where I don't trust her and she's not giving me a reason. But, you know, I don't trust people to trust me or to care about me enough to care about me. And I'm getting really frustrated with it. And I, I just kind of want to. I just kind of want to leave the virtual world. And come back into the real world. And just maybe I just want to go sit at the park. Or sit at the lake. And draw and write. And, and do the things. But then at the same time. I've got to find another job. My daughter can't do it on her own. They've cut her hours tremendously. And, you know, we, we we're good for a month. But then after that, we're up shit creek. And so I've got to do something. Door dashing here is not not panning out. It's just I'm not getting any door dashes. I haven't over the last two days. Not any local. I can't. I, it's ridiculous to have to drive out of town to door dash and then take the chance on possibly not even making enough gas money to get home. So... You know, and then uh, there's the Instacart, which is shitty, too, because they give me dashes that are 35 miles away from home. I've done dashes, but shops, and that, that doesn't make any sense. So, you know, I thought I would be good with that. I thought if I could at least make $7,500 a day. Went out yesterday and made $14, and it's, it's disgusting. But then, you know, I just don't want to lose the fight to still be here. And it gets really hard. When you just want to give up. And I don't. Feel like there's a person. That I can go to. There's not. A person that I can talk to. You know. Everybody else has their own mental health issues. And their own personal problems. And I don't like to. Give mine to anybody else. I am probably going to try tomorrow. To work on a sewing video. You know I had lots of them planned. But. Like I said, I mean, I just don't think that people appreciated that I, the job was very hard on my body. And when I was home from work, all I wanted to do was sleep. And that seems to be okay for some people, just not for me. I'm supposed to be Wonder Woman, you know. I'm supposed to fly through the universe on my invisible jet, saving the world, I guess. You know, I can't do everything. I can't be there for everybody. There's nobody here for me. There's no where for me to turn. There's no body for me to talk to. And I make plans and I never, I never, ever will tell you that I have plans to do something that I don't actually have plans to do. But it seems like a lot of times the universe will work in against me. It will work against me. You know, I thought having a 12-hour job, 12-hour shift job, working two or three, three or four days a week when it started, um, I would still have those extra days to do things. But I just was really so tired. How can you not appreciate that? Why are people always telling me what I need to be doing? You don't live in my body. I've lived with chronic pain for 25 years. I, I, I injured my back when I was in kindergarten and it got worse when I had, well, we'll say 27 when I had my 27 year old because he, um, was a difficult birth as far as, you know, he was coming out facing the wrong way and they had to turn him. And I think that injured my back. And then it got worse because I subsequently, I had two more children. And by the time I had the last child, my little girl, I had my hernia, the herniated disc in my back was so bad I couldn't walk. I, I used to couldn't go in the store because it, it hurt so terribly. And I'm not one to ride on those scooters. So a lot of times I would have to either stay in the car or go to the car and wait 
while my husband or one of my teenage children went in and grabbed things. And I wasn't, I wasn't raised, we weren't allowed to express that we were feeling some sort of way, even when it came to pain. You know, daddy was really hateful. And so, you know, I have never been one to just constantly go, I will go, I will sweat through the pain, literally. And that's how it was at work. I mean, I was dripping like every morning and it was from pain. And I'm getting so sick of pretending like, you know, like it feels like people invalidate how I feel because I don't whine about it. I'm whining now, but I'm trying. But it's really hard when you're the only player on your team and you don't have any cheerleaders. So there's that. But I decided earlier to deactivate my Facebook accounts and take a little break. I don't know how long that'll be. I don't have to make it any certain amount of time. I can reactivate it tomorrow. I could just not reactivate it again for a while. Because I'm sick of people. I'm fucking sick of people. I'm fucking sick of liars and bullshitters and fakes and, and just, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of people talking shit even when they know they were wrong. They talk shit. They talk absolute shit. Even when you know you've done things that you shouldn't do, you're still going to talk shit about me for pointing it out. And I'm not trying to be a know-it-all. I'm just... The kind of work that I did, I have a lot of compassion for those people. I have a lot of patience for them. I take a different approach because I'm surrounded by mental health issues with my family. And, you know, some people would see one resident with the, you know, maybe he talked too much. He, he, he said and did things that irritated them. And I just kind of tried to, to look at him as somebody who, we all reach out in different ways. I see things different. I'll just put it that way. I want to make videos more regular. And I think that I will, that's one reason for deactivating my Facebook. Because I really don't, I, I don't, I'm so, I'm so tired of hearing about your babies and your your dogs and your 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 relationship problems and your fucking stupid ass shit that everybody's got going on. Nobody gives a shit about anybody else anymore. Nobody fucking cares. You're just reading a story on a timeline. You don't really care what's going on. You don't give a shit what another person is going through. You just want to get in their story and be a part of it and have an opinion on it. You you just we're not real anymore. We're we're just right here in the virtual world. And nobody cares to be a real person. I know so many fucking people who fake their shit on Facebook. It's it's just stupid. I miss the times when You know, when I left my first husband and I had just my two little kids, I, I all I had was a house phone. And I used to talk to my Grandma Louise for hours. I definitely got my my talkativeness from my grandmother. We would tell I remember one time I had a I had a landline I had a landline phone that was one of those desk phones that push button, but it had a cord. And I would pull my phone to the couch and sit there and talk to my grandma. My grandma had a cordless phone. And one time she said, Renee, we've been talking for eight hours, honey. I got to get off the phone. And, you know, we ended up talking for another hour or two after that. But we talked about nonsense. We talked about raising children. We talked about, and my grandmother and I connected. And I didn't give her nearly enough time when she was in a nursing home the last 
few years of her life. I should have spent every day with her because my grandmother was the only person that would talk to me. You know, my adopted mama would cut me off for months over petty shit. When I was depressed and I, I took a bunch of pills and tried to take my own life, she said, you're just trying to make me look bad. But I could call my grandma. And just talked to her all day. Breastfeeding my little baby. While we talked. And now you scroll a timeline. I've got. Eight siblings. Some of them I don't know very well. My two little brothers. Um, I grew up around them. I was a. Adopted one was adopted along with me and the other one was adopted by my grandmother. So he essentially became my uncle I used to pick on him and call him uncle Neil all the time. I love those two boys I used to spend hours with them. I mean, I'd go to their house just to stop by and see what they were doing and before you know it We're cooking out or something or you know It's it's it was morning when I got there and it's dark when I left and it felt so good to connect with somebody I feel I feel like I'm watching a TV show all the time, but I'm not really around people. I'm watching people's fake-ass lives with their fake-ass bullshit and their dumb-ass post. You know, get mad. I don't care. I don't want to see your gender reveal videos anymore. I want to see your pets. I kind of do. I take that. You know, don't get mad at me because I said that earlier. I want to see people. I want to be a real person because this this virtual life is not good for my mental health. And sharing my stories on Facebook just to have somebody screenshot them and send them to the fucking boss that fired me, you know, just so they can gossip. Not that they cared because the person who did it did not contact me and ask me what's going on. They knew what was going on. They knew it. I'm tired of the fake shit. I'm, I want to be in the real world. So I don't know when I'll be back to Facebook. But I do have um, accounts that... Who the fuck here? Y'all don't pay no attention to that either. The only time that anybody watched my lives on my Facebook page, if it's so twisted, was when there was something going on and I was upset and talking about it. Y'all don't care to talk about crafts or... Or sewing or, you know, learning new new things like that. It's really about having something to talk about, about the person that you're watching. You know, we all do it. I do it. I'm not going to lie. I see somebody's post that just kind of gets me like, eh. and my daughter and I will gossip about it. But I'm tired of that. I'm tired of, you know, I don't go anywhere. I'm tired of sitting at home waiting to see what the fuck's going on on Facebook or whatever it is. I got this is super long. I'm going to have to do a lot of editing. I love y'all. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I'm getting older and I'm getting tired and it's getting more difficult to change my ways, I guess. But, um, there are some of you whose opinion is about as important to me as a pile of squirrel shit out there. So don't worry. You can talk. You can say whatever. This matters more for me than for anybody watching this. So, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> oh, whoo! Bless me, hallelujah. So anyway, let's see what happens. Probably nothing. Maybe something. Maybe being more candid and honest about it will help me the way it should. So, peace. Bye-bye.